Good morning, it's 10 o'clock and welcome to the second live lesson of Maths with Miss. I'm delighted to have you here. Um, we're going to get started. I'm going to do just a quick recap for those of you who are new to these lessons. So um, let me get started. Okay, so 10 o'clock every morning. I've said this before, but you've got your PE with Joe at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock maths with Miss, and then English with Holly on a, at 11 o'clock on a Friday. Okay, so these will be live and they will be every morning at 10 o'clock. They are specifically targeted at year sixes transitioning into year seven. However, there's going to be loads of great resources that will be useful for year fives and year sevens, great consolidation opportunities for year sevens. So it really is a chance to practice. Every day we say little and often for maths, you know, half an hour a day, Monday to Friday, 10 o'clock with maths with miss. And then hopefully we can keep you, keep those maths skills up over the next few weeks and over the summer. Okay, so what you need is two pens if possible so you've got a different color for marking um, you need a notepad or some paper please if you have got your maths book perfect because then that will probably have squared um, it'll be squared paper so it'll be easier to um, keep your working nice and neat okay and as i said yesterday please bring your brain that's the most important thing just half an hour of your full attention and focus and it will make all the difference. Okay, so the first thing um, that we're going to do, you don't need to do it now, but I just want to show you, is this grid. I mentioned this yesterday. This is a 10 by 10 grid. And um, at the end of the lesson, if you haven't had a chance to do so, can you please pop that in your books? Um, and you'll see why in a moment okay so you can pause on this screen or I'll put it up at the end and you'll be able to see it okay so let's get started for those of you who were um, watching yesterday's lesson you will know that we did some review questions at the end of the lesson I'm going to put up the solutions to those now Okay, so we had five questions, five questions that you were left with yesterday. Question one, the highest common factor of 12 and 18 is six. If A is three and B is one, the value of seven A plus three B plus four is 28. Three cubed, remember that is three multiplied by itself three times, so three times three times three, that gives us 27. 1.2 multiplied by 1.2, we talked about this yesterday, how if you convert a decimal into a fraction, it helps you know where to put that decimal point. So you had an answer of 1.44. And finally, 0 0.35 as a fraction is 35 over 100 which you can simplify down to seven over 20. Hopefully you've all had a chance to mark those. Let's get started with today's questions. You have two minutes for those 10 questions.
you are about halfway through. You have one minute remaining. Okay, here's your second set of questions. You have 30 seconds remaining. Okay, and part three. Two seconds remaining. Thank you. 
Okay, let's take a look at some of the answers. This is our first set of 10 questions, part one. We have question one, one. Question two, 100. Question three, 34. Question four, 98. Question five, 90. Question six, 34. Question seven, four. Question eight, 98. Question nine, 34. Question 10, 95. Now for part two. Question one, 18. Question two, six. Question three, 10. Question four, nine. Question five, 70. Question six, six. Question seven, eight. Question eight, you can have 30 over 100 or you can simplify that down to three tenths. Question nine is 20.57, but then we must round it to the nearest number, so that's 21. And question 10 is negative six. Moving on to the last part, part three. We have question one is four. Question two is 90. Question three is seven. Question four is 11. Question five is 18. Question six is four. Question seven is 18. Question eight is negative four. Question nine is four. And question 10 is eight. Okay, so what we're going to do now, you may recall from yesterday, we're just going to pop them up on the board over here. So, we have for part one. Now, some of them are being repeated. Make sure you can see that. So, we have question one. We've got that. Question one, uh, 100, we've got that. 34 is a new number. Let's put that on. 34. We have 98 is a new number. Oops. 90 is also new. 34 we've done. 4 we've done. 98 we've done. And 95. Okay, let's do the second one, part two. 18, 6, 10, 9, whoops, 70, 6 and 8 are done, 30, we've got that, 21, we've got that, and negative 6, well, we've got 6. Okay, so the third part, let me grab the third board. Four, we have done 90. Yeah, we've done that. Seven, yay, we've got another one, seven. Okay, good. 11 for 11 a.m. Okay, remember when you're writing it in its 24-hour form, you don't put the a.m. after it. Okay, 18 we have. Then we have four, 18, four, four, and eight. Excellent. Now, I am very fortunate today that I have my daughter in the room and she is helping me and she is monitoring the live chat. So she keeps reminding me that if there are any shout outs, we need to factor in a little bit of time in our lesson to do the shout outs. At the moment, at the moment, I've only got one shout out, and that's from a member of my family. So when you've got a moment, put a shout out in there, and we will be happy, happy to 
mention you. Thank you. Okay, so we want to have a look at some of those questions that we've just done, maybe delve into them a little bit deeper. We're going to start with question eight on part two. The question was, what is 30% as a fraction? Let's take a little look. A little bit of a recap. So, so we're going from a decimal to a fraction. We call that decimal to fraction conversion. Okay? Let's move it around a little bit so you can see. All right. So, in this case, we started... Sorry, I need to pay more attention, don't I? It's not a decimal, it's a percentage, forgive me. Okay, so we've got percentage to fraction conversion. We started with 30%. Percent. Percent, percent means out of 100. So you might think that if you go on holiday and you need to change some money and you grab some euros, you get cents and you get euros. Or in America, you get cents and you get dollars. And there are 100 cents in a dollar or a euro, okay? There's 100 years in a century. So cents means 100, okay? Really to remember that. So percentage out of 100. So we have 30, 30 out of 100. We can write that as a fraction. We have 30 girls out of 100 children at sports day. Okay, so there's our fraction. But remember, I gave you two different answers. That's because I can also simplify my fraction. So to simplify my fraction, I need to find a factor that is common to both those numbers. Now we're quite lucky with this because 10 is common to both. So we can divide the numerator and the denominator by 10. Maybe it's better if I can hear. Okay, so we have, so we're gonna divide, whoops, we're gonna divide the numerator by 10. We're going to divide the denominator by 10 and we end up with three tenths. All good? Okay, the next one I thought it was worth just taking a little look at. Remember how I said about underlining your work? You will have a ruler, obviously. Yours will be neater than mine. Okay, the second one was just a little bit, a little bit of work on negative numbers. So, if we look at question 10 in part two, we have, let's just again put that little title there, negative numbers. We're not going to do all of the different rules. We're just going to touch upon it. So we had negative 18, and we were dividing it by 3. So if I had, it's hard to conceive what a negative number is. They're always really, really tricky for people. But if we had a bag here or a box, and it had negative 18 in it, and we needed to split that into three equal parts, okay? We're dividing into three equal parts. We would have negative six in each part. Okay, let's move on. So part three, there were a couple of questions that I thought would be interesting to look at there. Let's look at a little bit of algebra. So some of you will have touched upon al algebra, some of you not yet, but it's one of those topics that can be really quite scary. So let's take a look. So question seven, part, uh, question seven, part three. So we call this, well, algebra is the generic term, the general topic that we talk about, but this particular question is called substitution. That is because 
we are given um, we are given an expression. In this case, our expression is two b squared. Now, in this particular case, we're told what b is. The question tells us that b equals three. So we're able to look at two. Remember, between the two and the b, it's two lots of b. So it's the same as writing two multiplied by b. And b squared is the same as b multiplied by b. So we've got two multiplied by b multiplied by b again. So we've got two. We know that b is three. We're told that the question gives us that information times three and times three. Okay, and then we can just work left to right. Two times three is six. Six times three gives us 18. Right, let's see how we're doing for time. So I think we can squeeze in a couple more. My next question was about um, square numbers. It was a factor of 12 that was also a square number. That was question nine on part three. I'm going to rub up this side of the board, but obviously you can pause it if you need to make a note later. Okay, so square numbers. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, sometimes it's really handy if we don't understand a concept, that if we draw it, we find it really helps. Okay, so square numbers, some of you might know them and you might be able to reel off loads of them. But let's just try some of the basic ones to start with. So if I have a little square box, which is one by one, because it's a square, Oops. one multiplied by one, equals one, okay? Let's make that box a little bit bigger. I hope you can see this, maybe I need to move this back. Okay, now we've got, now we've got two multiplied by two, which gives us four. Hopefully you can see that. Let's make it bigger again. So now we've got three multiplied by three, gives us nine. Now I've got little squares on my board and you perhaps have got them in your notebooks as well if you're using a maths book. So it's quite easy for me to see that I'm drawing a shape that is still a square. These four dimensions are all the same. Let's do one more. So now we have four multiplied by four and that gives us 16. So remember the one and the two and the three and the four, they're not the square number. The square number is the result of multiplying the number by itself. Okay. And what we've actually worked out is the area of these shapes. This would actually be 16. If it was centimetres, it would be 16 centimetres squared. That would be the area of that shape. Right, I'm going to squeeze in one more, one more, which is question 10. So the last question of part three. And we had that funny little squiggle, didn't we? We wanted to work out, let's make room for the title. We wanted to work out yeah, hopefully you can read that. Okay, a funny squiggly sign of 64. Okay, so this means the square root, the square root of 64. Okay, so we need to, if we go back to our square numbers, we need to find a number that when we multiply it by itself, gives us an answer of 64. Okay, so if I kept going here, 
5 multiplied by 5 is 25, 6 multiplied by 6 is 36. Eventually, I would get to the number 64, because 8 multiplied by 8 gives us 64. Okay? All right. Over to you. Here are your review questions for today's lesson. Over to you. Okay, well, that's all from me for today. Thank you very much for your attention. Just a reminder, I can see my daughter has been very busy putting smiley faces on our live chat. So please do pop your name on for a shout out. That would give me a great deal of pleasure and would reduce the number of smiley faces coming from my nine-year-old. So, um, I'm just going to pop up that grid that I talked about, the 10 by 10 grid, so you can tick off those numbers. So far, we've got 20 numbers ticked off now from yesterday and today. Let's try and get that board covered over the next few lessons. So here you go. Thank you very much. Please, please subscribe. Please share with your friends. The more people we can get involved with this, the better. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you.